On today's Super tutorial, what we're going to be talking about is how to make a simplified version of this website, New Aesthetic 2. Now, as I scroll down this website, you'll see this really cool effect going on where this book looks like it opens up and we can see all the different parts of the book as we scroll up and down the page. Now, if I was to do this as a tutorial, this will be a few weeks. There's a lot of code that goes into this. So what we're going to show you is how to do a simplified version of this. Now, ours is going to look something like this. As I scroll down the page, we'll have this book turning in 3D space. And if I go back up the page, we can see it turns the other way around. So how do we go about doing this? Now we're gonna do this in five different steps. The first one is we're gonna make a book in 3.js. So how do we make this 3D box? The next thing we'll do is we'll add some ambient and directional lighting. As you can see, as we scroll down the page, we'll see different areas get lighter and darker as it turns. The next thing we'll do is we'll add six different textures for each part of the book. Next, we'll actually make it turn when we scroll up and down the page. And the fifth thing we'll do is we'll add some smoothing to the scroll. So if I scroll really quickly up and down the page, this still feels nice and smooth. So this is what we're gonna do on today's Supai tutorial. So what I'm beginning this project with is a little bit of a setup. So I've just created a brand new project. In here, I've got some HTML. I've just got a section tag and with some actual content in here, which is actually taken from our real book. If you don't know what HTML and CSS is, there's a book that I wrote all about it. And with this, we've got some CSS as well. So just some basic uh, typography and a little bit of margin and some spacing in here to get something like this. Now with this as well, I've also got some six images that look like this. Those are some uh, white edges that I made in Figma very quickly. So basically what I'm trying to make is the six different edges of the book. So just giving myself a little bit of setup, I've made these as PNGs that are exported and then just added to my project. Now, how do we go about adding some 3D into our project? Well, if I go to my index.html, essentially what I want is some area to put some content in. Now at the moment, I don't really have an area to put content in. So what I'm gonna do is just quickly make above my content section, a section with the class of book. Now in here, this is where my actual 3D book will go. So I'm just gonna add a comment in here that says 3D book goes here. I can indent that as well, just to make it a little bit cleaner. So what tool do we need to use to make a 3D book? Now, essentially what we're gonna be using for this project is 3.js, which is a JavaScript 3D library. Super easy to use and it's very actually um, powerful under the hood. And there's a lot of these cool projects you can actually do using 3.js. Now, if I go to the documentation, it will show us how we can actually create a scene. So that before we start, you need to actually use 3.js. Now we need to add this to our project so we can download a copy and add it to our project. Now, I like to do this in a kind of easy way by using a CDN, Content Delivery Network, and I can just type in 3JS CDN, and this is actually the first result. And what I can do is take this URL from here and just add it into my project as a script. So back in my code, at the bottom of my HTML, I'm gonna add 3JS. So this is a new script tag, and we're gonna say this has a source equal in quotes to the CDN link. So something that looks like that, if you download it and add it to your project, you can also add it in the same way. So this is adding 3JS to our project, but what we want to do is write some of our own code to add into this particular project. So to do this, I'm gonna write my own scripts. Here, I'm gonna call this one book.js because it's a book we're adding. Now, if I write some code in book.js, it won't actually be attached to this page. So I'm gonna add it to my index.html first. So below, my 3.min.js, I'm gonna add another script tag with the source of book.js. So I need to add 3.js before I add book.js because I need 3 to write in my book.js code. Now back on the 3 website, it shows you how to create a scene. So before we start, we added 3, we've done this, we've just added this bit, and this is where our JavaScript will go in our book.js. So what I'm gonna do is just follow the instructions here. First thing we need to do is create a scene and a camera and a renderer. Now a renderer is a canvas tag under the hood. So I'm just gonna take this code from here, gonna copy and paste it into book.js. So in book.js, gonna paste this in. Now currently nothing will happen here, which is totally fine because there's more steps to it. So back on 3.js website, we're gonna go down and follow the instructions again. We're gonna take this next bit of code, copy and paste it underneath. So underneath here, we're gonna paste that. And again, nothing will happen. 
Underneath here, we'll see how we render the scene. So I'm going to take this code here, I'm going to copy this and paste underneath. Now, this may look like it's going to do something here. It says render this scene and suddenly there's nothing here. However, if we scroll down the page, what we'll see is underneath at the very bottom, there is this green square. Now, what has happened here is this is adding to the very bottom of the page, document.body append child. But what we wanted to do is add it in our index.html in this section with a class of book. So I'm just going to change my code to update this accordingly. So back in book.js, we're going to add our section tag, which we just created, and then add this renderer, which is a canvas tag, to that instead. So what I'm going to do at the top of this whole page in book.js is say constant called section. And this is going to be equal to, in our document, we want to do a query, selector, and right brackets. What do you want to select? Well, let's select that section with the class of book. Now, currently we're not using this section thing that we've just made, it still would be down at the bottom. But what I can do now is replace this sec, uh, do so what I can do now is replace this document.body with section. Now what this will do at the top of the page is now add it up here. This is at the top and then we have our content underneath. So what we need to do is now add this layering up. And this layering is all to do with CSS. So back in my style.css, what I want to do is not only have this section.content, but above it, I'm going to have a section.book. And in here, what I want it to be is in fixed position. Position fixed. Where do I want it to be fixed to? The top zero and left zero. And you might notice already this starts to scroll in the right place. Now, there is some layering that we need to do here. So I'm going to make this have a Z index of zero but I want my content to be above it. So in my section.content, I'm also gonna add position relative and a Z index of one. So this means that my content is above my section.book. And if I scroll up and down the page, we should see this book being in this background. Now, if I go back to this creating a scene in 3.js, I can scroll down and animate the cube. And it says right before we do renderer.render in my animate function, I can add this little bit of code. So I'm going to take this code here and do what it says. So back in my book.js here, where I've got this renderer.render, I'm going to add this code. I'm going to copy and paste this. And what we should see is a box turning in space. Now, of course, this is the wrong size and maybe the wrong speed of actually rotation. So I'm actually going to add the right things in here. Now, to do this, I have a geometry and a material. Geometry is the shape. Material is the color and what it looks like. Now, to change the shape of this, I'm going to change the geometry. I'm going to put some numbers in here. So I'm going to put in 3.5 to give it some width, comma 5 to give it some height, and then comma 0 0.5 to give it some depth. So this is actually the final shape of the book. Now, this might seem a little bit close to the camera at the moment. So I'm just going to move my camera back from five to six. And this is the actual final size of what we want. Now, you might notice this is in the wrong color. It also doesn't have any lighting on here. So what we'll talk about next is how to add some color with some lighting. <laughs> So at the moment that we have this flat green color, so we've changed the geometry up here, which is changing the size of things. We can also change the material as well. Now, the thing that we have in here at the moment is a color, and this is using OX and then a hex value. So for instance, if I want to change this to the super high blue color, I'd keep this OX in here, but change the actual hex value to something like 2727E6. And this will give it a flat color that looks like this. Now, the reason it's a flat color at the moment is because we're using a mesh basic material. We can go in the sidebar of 3JS and find all these different types. So again, if I scroll down, we'll have all the geometries. I've got a box geometry, which I've just used. I could use a circle if you want to make a circle shape instead. A plane if I want a flat box. But what I want to change is the material types. So in here, I've got materials. At the moment, I'm using a basic material, which is a flat color. For my book though, I want to add some depth to it. So what I might want to use instead is something like a mesh Lambert material, something that can have shadows. So this is what I'm going to just add into my code. So instead of this being a mesh basic material, I'm going to change basic to Lambert. Now what you'll see is this disappears. 
And the reason for this is now this thing is affected by lighting, but we don't have any lighting on this page whatsoever. So let's go and add it. So above here, what we're going to say is before we have any geometry, we're also going to add some lighting. Now, again, in the sidebar here, if we have materials, we also have different kind of lights. So we've got lights, an ambient light, a directional light. First of all, we're going to add some ambient light. So this will just basically light things up in a kind of like general way. So we're going to say constant and this is going to say ambient. And this is going to be equal to a new three in capitals ambient light. Now what goes in ambient light? We're just going to check the documentation. This just has a value. So what color this is now for mine, I'm going to keep this quite low. So I'm going to make this in like zero X and then the hex value. Now the one I'm going to use is two, 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 two. Now currently we can't see this box because we've added the light, but we've not added it to the whole scene. So it doesn't know whether to render this ambient light. So underneath I'm going to use scene dot add. What do we want to add? Ambient light. Now you might see very lightly in the background, this shape is here. And again, if I change this color now to something a bit lighter, something like eight, 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 we'll start to see this in the background. So again, this is kind of looking what we'd had from before. It looks flat. Now, because this is an ambient light, it's basically going to add light to every single part from every single direction. Now with this, I'm also going to add not just an ambient light, but also a directional light as well. Now this has more parts of this. It has things like what color it is, how strong it is and what direction it should come from. So underneath here in ambient, I'm also going to add a constant called light. And this is equal to a new three directional light. What do we want in here? Well, let's want, let's make this a white light. So we're going to say this is OX and then white is FF, FF, FF. And underneath here, what we want to do is give it a position. Where is this light coming from? So at the moment, I want to basically place it where the camera is. The camera is at 006. So I'm going to say light dot position dot set. And in round brackets, where do you want to set this to? Zero comma zero comma six. And similar to before, we have this ambient light. Let's place it in our scene. Scene dot add on this light. So this has brightened it up, but now what you might see is we have these kind of edges where the light is being affected. Now, because I've got this ambient light set up, I'm going to actually reduce the color of this. So I'm going to change it back to two, 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 two. So now what we can see is some shadows and some highlights. This light is coming from the front at the camera facing the book. And as the book rotates in space, we get different colors starting to appear. So let's pretend for now that each side of the box has exactly the same material, which is kind of true. Everything's in blue right now, but let's actually replace it with an image like front.png. How do we go about doing this? Well, what we can do as part of 3JS is use a texture loader and we can see in the loaders area, we have this texture loader. We can actually pull things in. So let's add this to our material. So back in book.js, what I'm going to do after ambient and light is say a constant called loader. And this is equal to a new three texture loader. So now this is given us the ability to actually load textures in. So where do we want to put this? Well, we have a geometry, which is the size of this thing and the shape of this thing. And we have a material, which is the look and feel. I want to put it in the look and feel. So I'm going to put this in the material. Now, again, what I can do is just space this out to make it a little bit easier to read. And after I have this color, I'm going to replace color completely with something else map. The map is going to be from the loader. We're going to load in a thing. What do we want to load? Well, for now, we're going to load in front.png. So what we'll get now is on every single side of this cube, we'll have our actual material. It looks correct. Well, it doesn't look correct because actually I have six images that I want to load. What do I want to load in here? Well, essentially I want to load in six different materials for each individual side. So basically what I want is a list of different materials. So above here, what we're going to say is what? Well, the first thing we need to work out is where these materials are going to be, like which one is which. Now, the way this works in 3JS is we're going from the X direction, the Y direction, which is up and down, and then towards the camera. So we're going to make a constant 
of URLs. Which order do we want this list to be in? This is going to be a list with square brackets. And what I'm going to do is just open up this list. Now, what I want to do is go from this side of X to this side of X, then this side of Y to this side of Y, and then X direction as well, which is hard to show on a 2D screen. So I'm going to do the X direction first. So I want this edge.png to be the first thing, which is on this side, comma, the spine.png on this side. Next, what I want is the top. So I want the top.png and then the bottom PNG. So this is X, X side, Y, Y side. Next, what I want to do is the front.png and then the back.png. Now this is currently just a list of strings. Basically, it's just me writing some quotes in here. It doesn't really do anything. But what I want to do is take each individual one here and turn it into a material, something that looks like this. So underneath here, what I'm going to say is a constant for materials. This is going to be equal to using this URL list, I want to change it using a map. Now map is different than one here. It's basically go over each one of these and change it into something else. We're going to map it using URL goes to curly brackets. Basically, we're taking this and then turning it into a material one by one. We're going to open this up and instead we're going to return back a new 3.mesh Lambert material. And in here, we're going to say, let's run it and do something. What do you want to load in here? Again, I'm load, going to open these curly brackets up. Map is loader.load. And in round brackets, look how close this looks. Now, the only thing we're going to change from this and this is this is going to be based on this URL that gets passed in. So the first one's going to be edge, then spine, then top, then bottom, then front, then back. So this is a list of six things, six different materials. So now what I can do is instead of this cube having a mesh based on this geometry and a single material, we can replace it with materials. And what we should see is this book looking correct, which means I can actually just get rid of this code for material singular and get rid of it completely. So what we've done now is we replaced every single side with the right texture in the right order. <laughs>so the moment this book is just naturally rotating every single frame of the page we have this cube rotation x we're just adding a tiny little bit to it each time but what we want to do is not base this on a loop instead what we want to do is base it on scroll so i'm going to get rid of this cube rotation x cube rotation y and basically what we'll get is a flat book now what i want to do is have some area to scroll into so i'm just going to go into my style.css and say on my body of the page I'm going to add something else. I'm going to add in a min height of how far do I want to scroll? Well, if I wanted to scroll something like 3000 pixels, let's say, I could put in something like 3000 px. And this gives us a lot more area to scroll into. However, the difference between the top and the bottom here is 3000 pixels. But you notice I have this top movement that is changing. How big can I scroll into is slightly different. So what I need to account for is also the height of the browser here. So if I want 3000 pixels to scroll into, the minimum height of the page isn't 3000, it's actually 3000 plus the height of the browser itself. So around this, I'm gonna add calc and say calc this plus 100 VH. I'm combining pixels and VH units, which is the height of the browser. So now if I scroll up and down the page, this is going to give me exactly 300 pixels to scroll into because now it accounts for the height of the browser. So now what I can do in my book.js is say how far down the page we've actually scrolled. So to do this in my animate function, what I'm going to say is let's save that how far down the page we are to something. I'm going to say this is a constant called current timeline. Now, if I'm on a mobile browser or if I've changed my different size of the screen, I'm really going to make this number go from zero at the top to just one, not 3000. So essentially what I'm going to say is how far down the page we've scrolled, the window page Y offset divided by 3000. So at the bottom, I'm at one and at the top, I'm at zero, basically a percentage instead. 
Now what I can do is use this current timeline between zero and one to work out things like rotation. So let's work out a rotation in the X direction. So the X direction, the way I like to think about rotation is if I have a string going across the page from here to here, what will actually happen as I rotate? So if I do something like constant RX, rotation X, we can now base this on current timeline. I'm just gonna keep it as that for now. And underneath here, what I can say is now that RX is based on this, we now wanna do something with RX on this cube. Let's get the rotation and set it to be Rx, comma zero, comma zero. So now if I scroll down the page, what you'll see is this start to tip forwards. And if we scroll back, it goes down. Now the reason why it only tips only a little bit forwards is I want us to kind of do a full loop. It's going the wrong way, but for now, let's just make it do a full loop. What I need to times this zero to one thing by is pi. So basically here, I'm gonna say times math dot Pi. So the way that rotation works is it likes to use radians and basically radian is a full circle. How much around a circle do we want to scroll? Now at the bottom here, I'm doing zero to pi, which is upside down. If I wanted to do a full loop, I can do two pi. I can times this whole thing by two. So now at the top, I'm the full way around. Halfway down the page, I'm the backwards way. And at the bottom, I've come back around to the start. Now, of course, what I want to do is do it in the other way, not Rx, but Ry. So I'm gonna do underneath Ry, and this is gonna look pretty much the same, times math.py times two. I'm gonna put this other one in as Ry. Now, at the moment, this feels way too overkill. It's spinning around in space too much. So I'm actually gonna make this Rx one a little bit more subtle. Now, what I'm gonna do is say, I want this to basically end at this. At the start, I kind of want it to be a little bit turned. So basically something like that. Now the way that I can do this is say something like, well, let's times this not by pi, but just the kind of number minus 0.5, which feels right at the start and at the end, but it feels the wrong way around. So at the start, I want this to be tips. So to do that, I'm just gonna basically add the opposite way. So if this is zero, this will be a 0.5, at the bottom it will be zero. So a little bit of math involved here. So at the start, I have something like this, and at the bottom, I have something like that. I can start doing out some of the working out as well, just based on this timeline. So for instance, if I want this one to be a little bit shifted, here what I can say is let's make that timeline a little bit shorter. So around this timeline, I'm gonna put some brackets and say, let's only do a little bit of this timeline, 90% of this timeline instead and let's plus one, so to add that 10% at the start. So at the top, it feels turned because this is this times zero, and this is zero, so it's this and this. And then at the bottom, we're at one, and this is half plus half, zero. And this is halfway around, so this is full pi. So just by tweaking some of this rotation now, I get in this timeline that's between zero and one, because I've done this multiplication. And essentially, I'm just doing some math here to basically work out where things should start and end. Now, one thing you might notice is if I do this kind of movement really quickly, this feels quite jerky. So next, what I'm gonna do is add some smoothing to this scroll. <laughs> So the way that I like to do smooth movements is using a technique called tweening. So basically at the moment, this is gonna shift exactly where it will be at that position. But if I go really, really quick and really, really fast up and down this page, it feels too quick. So basically I want some kind of aim for this. So the way that I'm gonna do this is I'm gonna take this timeline and basically make it have an aim and go between the current position and an aim position. So above here, Above my animate function, I'm gonna use let. So I'm gonna let the current timeline be equal to this page y offset divided by 3000. And I'm gonna take that and copy and paste. And underneath, I'm also gonna say let aim timeline be the same thing. So where I start is the same place as where I want to go to, there's no movement. But what I'm gonna do instead of this constant uh, thing here, it's basically say, if there is a difference between the aim and the current, basically have a little bit added every single time so there's some smooth movement in here. Now the way to do this is say, current timeline 
We're going to add equals, we're going to add a little bit based on the difference between the two, the aim timeline, take away the current timeline. Now, if we use this right now, it will just use exactly the same thing as what we have currently because there's no difference between the aim and the current. We're just adding it straight away. So what I'm going to do to this whole thing is times it by a little bit, 0 0.01. So it's a lot slower when it turns. Now, at the moment, if I scroll up and down the page, aim and current don't change because aim doesn't change. This is always set. This is always set and it doesn't update. So what I want to do is update aim timeline so that eventually there's some difference between the two. And then that means the current timeline can update. So underneath what I'm going to say is let's update the aim. So how do we do this? We're going to listen out for the scroll event window the add event listener at the bottom. What do we want to listen out for a scroll event? What do we want to do when we do a scroll event? We want to run some code function round brackets, curly brackets. What do we want to do in here? Well, now the page scroll has been updated. So the aim timeline is going to be a different page Y offset. So I'm going to take this code from here, apart from let and just paste it in. And what we'll get now, if I scroll up and down the page very quickly is this will automatically go to the point where it wants to go. And the reason why it goes so slow is because of this number here. Basically, this is kind of like a dampening factor. So if I want to change this to speed up, I could do 0.1. But notice, even if I scroll down really quickly, this effect still works pretty smoothly. It doesn't jerk around. It doesn't look like it doesn't jerk around. It feels incredibly smooth. Now you can play around with some of these numbers in here, but what we have now is basically this buck that turns in space. Now there is one thing that I want to do before we finish, and that is essentially let's change the background color of this entire page. So at the moment, this is 22222A. And if I change this to something like, I don't know, bright blue, this doesn't appear. So let's make this background see-through. So back in book.js, I want to render this whole background to be see-through. So I'm going to scroll up and I'm going to find WebGL renderer, this line six currently. And in here, what I want to do is add in an alpha channel. Alpha is true. And this will put in my background. Now you might notice as well that some of the edges look a little bit pixelated. So I'm also going to add in anti-alias is true as well. This gives me a nice smooth edge. So I can play around with some of this stuff. I can change how this works really, really quickly. And in a short amount of time, it gives me a 3D book with lighting. It spins around in space. It has this smoothing effect to it as well in only about 56 lines of code.